Hello everyone, I'm Colin, CEO at Sintasso. I'm going to share some of my pains that I felt while building platforms for the last 25 years and talk about the evolution of platform engineering over that period. We're going to cover how platform engineering is continuously evolving. Right now, we see a lot of platform engineering teams delivering fire and forget solutions. I believe that's going to change. Those fire and forget solutions lead to platform decay and rotting organizations. What are we going to do about that? Well, we need to build platform democracies. I'm going to show you how to do just that. When I started my career in the late 90s, most companies had dev and ops teams. I was in the ops team. Whenever we wanted to make a change or improve a service or a site, the dev teams would write the change and hand it to the ops teams for deployment. This sequence of actions represented the flow of value in the organization. The big problem with this picture is that to deliver value, i.e. to push an app to production, two teams are involved in the flow. Neither team own the flow of value. Devs write the code and say, well, it works on my laptop. Ops say, no, we're not going to be pushing this code to production because it might break things. There is an awesome book called Team Topologies that states that each team must own their own flow of value or delivery will grind to a halt. So what tended to happen in this dev versus ops setup was that delivery ground to a halt. It gets particularly bad at scale. On the ops team, it always felt like I was blamed for everything breaking, even though I didn't write the code that caused the problems. I had to run the code even though I didn't write it. Amazon had a particularly strong reaction against this way of working, instituting a rule of you write it, you run it. That kind of thinking created the DevOps movement. DevOps was actually about culture across the organization. But in reality, a lot of DevOps teams would just deliver everything themselves. This was made possible by the big public clouds being able to provide infrastructure as a service to DevOps teams. DevOps solved the flow of value problem. Each team is able to write and run their entire own application stack. Unfortunately, this is a lot to do for one team. So a lot of corners were cut as we couldn't all be experts at everything. This problem also gets particularly bad at scale. Once we have a lot of DevOps teams, each building and maintaining their own little platform, the organization looks terribly inefficient. We're now building a large number of not very good platforms. This is why platform as a product emerged. The platform should offer what is unique to your business, but common to your application teams, making life easier for the application teams. In this setup, the platform team adds value by offering a set of non-blocking common resources to the application teams, abstracting these resources down into the platform. This lowers the application team's cognitive load without interrupting their flow of value. But what do we mean by abstracting these resources down into the platform? And how do we define a platform? Well, your platform has to deliver on the three platform pillars. These are the tests you should apply to any platform. Number one, on demand. It needs to be API driven, X as a service, Ticket systems and waiting times or blocking are not acceptable. On demand makes your platform and your business fast. You must bring the on demand instant access as a service, cloud like experience to your platform. Do not block the application teams. Make your platform fast. This is pillar number one. Number two, context aware. Handing out commodity resources that aren't ready to use in the organization is not acceptable. Is your service governed and compliant? Is it a high level abstraction or does the app team have to do all the wiring themselves? That's not acceptable. Does your platform work with your portals, your application orchestrators, your service now setup or whatever else you have in your business? 
Does your platform orchestrate your mainframe? Any public and private clouds, Terraform, Puppet, Chef, Kubernetes, Ansible, or anything else that you've got? Because these are processes and technology your business actually uses. Raw public clouds can't do this. They can't offer what's unique to your business but common to your teams. This is where public cloud falls short, but you must succeed because only you can build your platform. If you leave this customization, this context awareness to each application team, you're back in the inefficient, unsafe DevOps picture we started with. You need to ensure your policies, your compliance and your governance are baked into your platform resources. Having the resources context aware and ready to use makes your platform safe for your application teams. This is pillar number two. Number three, fleet managed. This is the most important pillar, in my opinion. Without this, your platform will decay and rot and will be the death of your organization. Spotify call this fragmentation. It's the silent killer. Ask yourself, are you able to upgrade groups of resources from a service via a single command? For example, all of your dev databases or all of your prod CI CD systems. If not, maintaining all of your snowflakes will grind your teams and your organization to a halt. How do you detect drift and convergence on desired state for all of your estate so you can remain compliant within policy and effectively governed? If you've been delivering templates via a portal, or you think that your platform is some shared code, you've done the inverse Amazon. The app teams didn't write that stuff, but now they have used your portal, they have no choice but to run it. Unacceptable. That is not a platform. That's how you cripple an application team. That's platform decay. I mean, just think, Amazon don't make you go to their data centers to upgrade their servers. So don't force your application teams to maintain the things that you built. Fleet management of your resources makes your platform sustainable and efficient. If you don't want your organization to become overwhelmed by the portals and templates maintenance burden with rotting platform decay, you need fleet management efficiency. This is pillar number three. So let's ensure our platform abides by these three pillars and take a look again at our organizational structure. So now we're delivering a useful platform. This is where I was circa 2012 with the platform as a service model, such as Heroku and Cloud Foundry. But actually, life was still really tough because at any scale, there are a lot of services beyond simple apps that platforms should be delivering. CICD, data, AI, ML, and many more. How can one platform team be expert to everything? Life is too painful in this setup and the platform team is overwhelmed. I felt overwhelmed. Here's an interesting insight for you. One of the authors of Team Topologies, uh, the Team Topologies book I mentioned earlier, was recently asked, what have you learned since publishing the book? And replied that, in reality, it's not just a platform team, it's a platform group. The organization structure actually looks like this. The platform team's role is not to deliver all of the platform value themselves, is to facilitate the interactions between the platform consumers and the platform producers. It's to enable the flow of value from the producers to the consumers. We have to make sure the platform does not block the flow of value or the organization will grind to a halt. In addition to this, the platform interface must ensure that the platform producers deliver on the three pillars I mentioned earlier, on-demand, context-aware, fleet managed. How does the platform team enable the platform producers to abide by those three pillars whilst not blocking their flow of value? How does the platform enable producers to deliver a great platform experience as a service? The platform must enable producers to make and keep their promises. Promises are the key concept in Kratix, the platform engineering framework. The promise is the abstraction that enables teams to contribute their services to a core platform via the Promise API without blocking their flow of value. Each promise represents an on-demand, context-aware, fleet-managed resource that, when promised, becomes available for the organization to consume. This is how we create a platform democracy. 
In a platform democracy, everyone can create value in an on-demand but sustainable way, and everyone can consume that value quickly but safely. The whole organization wins. If you're feeling the pains I felt in my career, where you'll feel like you're being blamed for everything and everyone is waiting on you, try changing from being a blocker to enabling your platform democracy with Kratics. So let's revisit what we've said. As I mentioned at the beginning, platform engineering hasn't finished evolving. Scale and time are causing platform decay and forcing the move towards platform democracy. If you'd like to take your next step in the journey, please follow this QR code to understand more information on platform democracy, more case studies from organizations such as NatWest Bank, how to use Kratics with your current technology choices, be that portals, infrastructure orchestrators, or application orchestrators, how to get started with Syntaxo Kratics Enterprise on your platform democracy journey, including our promised marketplace. Thank you very much for listening. And I'm sure once you get started with Kratics, you'll have many happy years of platform building. That's a promise.